Hi, good afternoon. My name is Sanjay Nadaraja. I'm the quality director at Inglasia Farm Solutions. I'm going to be giving you a short presentation on uh, good manufacturing practices. Uh, this is an introduction session, just giving you an overview of some of the topics that um, we, we cover in, in more depth at Inglasia. And these uh, presentation slides are, are essentially based around the ICH uh, guidelines. So they, they are applicable to, to global uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing operations. The purpose of this training really is to give you an awareness of uh, the requirements of good manufacturing practices and essentially it's to ensure that medicines are, are manufactured um, to the right uh, safety, uh, to the right efficacy and to the right quality. Uh, a lot of the emphasis around good manufacturing practices is to make sure that uh, the quality is consistent throughout the process and the, the life cycle of the uh, medicinal product. How does the pharmaceutical quality management system support manufacturing and, and uh, testing activities that would typically take place at a, a GMP facility? Uh, now, a lot of this is, is controlled around uh, certain processes that are overseen by, by quality uh, and the quality activities. Uh, and what I'll be touching on uh, briefly in this uh, introductory session is, is the quality management that, that supports the operational processes, the, the personnel that, that are involved in, and how are they managed from a quality perspective. Again, documentation, um, what are the quality requirements on, on the documentation that we need to hold for, for our GMP operations, uh, the premises and the equipment, and, and how are these meant to be um, controlled and, and, and documented in terms of their, their usability and consistent usability. Operations uh, looks at uh, what are the operational activities that uh, should be overseen by, by quality and, and the GMP controls. The contracted services, uh, which I'll be touching on, which will just uh, cover what, what, do I, what do I mean by contracted services. And these are, again, those that impact on, on the GMP activities of, of, of the manufacturing site. Inspections, um, what are those? Uh, and incidences, um, what are incidences and, and where do they happen? Uh, and how are these managed um, by, by the quality processes? Now, I've kind of thought of an interesting concept for the uh, quality management uh, system uh, and, and how it uh, embraces all the operations uh, within a, a manufacturing facility. So here I've called it the Pharmaceutical Tree Limited. And I see quality management really as the roots, the, the foundation that, that uh, embeds itself in, in, within every process of the business uh, to support it and sustain it uh, and, and continually uh, maintain that. And from a, from a quality perspective, on a, on a consistent uh, basis. Uh, and that's why a lot of the processes within, within manufacturing you'd find have to be uh, tried and tested and, and shown to be uh, re reproducible. Um, that's why we do a lot of validation in manufacturing. That's why we have certain processes within the quality management system, such as the, uh, the management reviews to see that uh, these processes are consistently being managed. And, and if they're not, then, then what are we doing to kind of improve on it through our continuous improvement processes, uh, such as your, your, your cappers that we have. And, and also in terms of each product and, and the batches we manufacture, are these being manufactured uh, consistently and to the right quality? And the, the product quality review, the PQRs and annual product uh, reviews, which are essentially what we call uh, PQRs over in, in, in the US, uh, how are these uh, evaluating the, the manufacturing operations and the consistency of it? And, and any, any indicators of any, any, any issues uh, within, within manufacturing and testing will be highlighted within, within those APRs and PQRs. Also, uh, when, when we do identify issues around cappers, we, we, we then have change controls that are initiated to, to try and make sure that those, those issues are, are, are resolved and we're working uh, to a much more compliant way uh, and hopefully more efficient way uh, to, to uh, streamline our, our processes. Quality risk management is a big topic, um, again, falls under quality management. Uh, and this is really, again, 
looking at the entire manufacturing facility and, and what are the risks and how do we, we mitigate those. The quality management system is essentially uh, a system where we control all the policies, site master files, quality manual and all the procedures. Uh, and this makes up the, the, the quality management system, the roots of the business that, uh, that, that sustains our business on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, making us flourish and be a profitable organization. Personnel, um, this is one of the one of the areas that uh, that quality uh, oversees um, site wide, uh, I, I would say, and and for this we need to ensure that we have a, a, a robust process uh, with HR, the human resources function, to onboard uh, staff uh, and to make sure that they're suitably qualified to to be able to do the job. Firstly, and and also to to ensure that they receive the the the, the initial training uh, to 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 make them uh, aware of. The quality expectations within within your organization. They should be issued with a, a signed job description so they know what their responsibilities are, especially from a from a from a GMP perspective, uh, in terms of what they do on a on a day to day basis. And that should be signed by by the uh, the, the hired and their hiring manager. Initial and ongoing GMP training is something that uh, should be uh, in place site-wide, everyone on site. And, and you know, we're not just talking here about the manufacturing uh, operators, uh, packing staff or, or engineers. We're also talking about the, 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 the support functions such as um, your, your, your facilities, your uh, HR even, uh, finance, all the functions really should have some level of GMP awareness because they're all on the same site. They could all walk into manufacturing sometimes or, or, or even quality assurance or, or QC uh, and they need to be aware of, of, of good manufacturing practice requirements. Everyone should have a training file, um, whether that sits with the individual or within a centralized location within quality or HR, there, there needs to be a file there for every individual to show their initial ongoing and, and sort of retraining uh, where, where necessary uh, should be held within the individual's training file. There should be a training matrix defining the levels of training that individuals have received. Um, best practice says you must have uh, uh, read and understand uh, a classroom training and on the job training, just so that um, the, 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 the qualified uh, subject matter expert can, can oversee the individual uh, in terms of how they perform the task and, and verify whether they're, they're ready to be let loose to do the task themselves. And now the maintenance of the competency, it's, it's an ongoing uh, process here. It's not uh, do it once and that's it. Uh, recommended that annually staff are, are trained, retrained on, on their processes so that any, any changes have been, been mopped up um, you know, in, in terms of uh, on the job training to make sure that the individual is up to date with the current procedure on a particular process. And people don't stay with, in, with companies forever. They do tend to move on and, and when they do, then the organization should ensure that there's an offboarding process as well where the individual's training file is, is moved into uh, archive and any, any um, sort of access rights within the business, whether that be access into the building or even to electronic systems, that they are deactivated for that individual. Documentation uh, is quite a big area that, that quality gets involved in site-wide in terms of all the documentation that's generated uh, at a GMP manufacturing facility. Quality should have some level of oversight of that, some greater than, than, than others, but uh, definitely they should have uh, visibility to all GMP documentation on, on, on premises. And that can be uh, paper-based or, or electronic. If it's an electronic system where you're managing the, the batch documentation or uh, dealing with outer specifications uh, or deviations, uh, these all need to be uh, managed by a, a system that's validated and fully qualified for use. And uh, that's looking at the whole process of the validation lifecycle, which I'll touch on very briefly uh, further on in this presentation. And who controls and manages the uh, 
document management system. Now, the DMS is something that essentially sits within quality and there needs to be someone there that's uh, overall responsible for that and, and, and policing it so that uh, people don't end up abusing the system and, and making sure that it's, it's compliant and, and follows the, the qualification of that, that system requirements that's then defined within the, the working procedures that people will follow on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I've always, uh, when I've done my audits, GMP audits, I've always looked to see who is accountable for the uh, document management system and, and are they making sure that uh, they have full oversight of all the different aspects of it uh, and, and who is kind of delegated some of those responsibilities to and, and how is that captured within, within their training files uh, and procedures. So how do you ensure data integrity? This is quite a, uh, a talked about topic nowadays. Uh, a lot of people want to know how, you know, whether it's a paper-based system or electronic, that uh, you have processes to ensure that uh, uh, the data is 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 accurate, is, is it's secure, and and is is not corruptible. And uh, a, a term that's used a lot nowadays is Alcoa, and I've just got here what what the um, acronym Alcoa stands for. Um, so really. You know, in, in summary, this is uh, it's really saying that everything that you complete, whether that be on paper or, or, or electronically, that it's done on the time, it's uh, it's verified, it's uh, it's traceable, and it is retrievable uh, at any at any time, uh, and it's it's secure. So uh, essentially, this this is what what it means. So what documents are controlled? Uh, I've just listed out some here for you to have a look at. Uh, as you can see, site master file right at the top there, um, very, very, very crucial to, to the site operations, summarizing everything that goes on at your manufacturing uh, facility. Uh, the quality manager kind of sits behind below that and then the policies come from that and the procedures and working instructions. And then you have the, the, the records, master records uh, and, and, and logs that you, you would complete. It's kind of uh, the, the, the documents that you'll generally find on, on site. Uh, validation master plan, I'm not going to hear, but don't worry, it comes on a bit further on in the presentation, but that's also another key document, just like your, your site master file or quality manual. Um, so yeah, something to bear in mind about these documents, and hopefully you do have all those on your, on your manufacturing facility. So what does this mean? Um, identification and traceability. Um, so uh, with regards to your, your, your documentation, you know, we have your, your records and, and your logs and so on that we've uh, just uh, touched on. Uh, traceability uh, is something here where we say we need to have unique identify codes. And how do we trace those as well? How do we keep a log of all the, all the unique codes that we generate on site that we apply to, for example, um, certain components that we use or certain uh, raw materials? batch numbers, um, you know, unique identified codes that we, we, we keep a record of uh, in ensuring that we have traceability. If later on we were to have issues around the manufacturing that we need to investigate, we can trace right back to, to a, a particular material that we used in production. Uh, when was it used? When, when did we source that? Who did we source it from? And, and we can trace right back all the way uh, um, in, in, down the supply chain to, to the supplier and supplier. Premises and equipment, so uh, quality covers uh, all aspects of your, your premises in terms of its uh, the, the building, the, the contents and the controls uh, around the, the manufacturing operations uh, on your premises. So it's all the equipment really that, that support those activities. Um, there should be a suitably adequate premises, installations and equipments for the manufacturing, packing and analytical testing uh, performed. So, you know, I'm not just talking about the, the manufacturing of your, your drug products, but also um, your QC lab where you, you, you would test it throughout the, the manufacturing operations and at the end for, for releasing the product. Um, even the equipments there all need to be uh, qualified appropriately uh, prior to, to use. So qualification and validation, 
the document which I did did mention at the beginning uh, earlier on uh, is the validation master plan and that covers site-wide uh, all validation activities that take place uh, of your electronic systems, of your equipment, of your processes, uh, all uh, it, it, it covers within the VMP to say that you know th these need to be happening on your site and then from this you generate your own documentation for, for each piece of equipment whether that be a high performance liquid chromatography, uh, a, a mass spec or, or a, a, a blender in, in production or a dispensing uh, unit, uh, all will need to be uh, validated um, following the, the, the validation master plan uh, sort of steps of, of validation. Computerized systems as well would, would fall under that. Um, your, your building management system, uh, your electronic document management systems, laboratory information management systems, all uh, have to be validated and, and qualified for use. And documentation should be available uh, in the event that uh, an auditor or a client would like to see that the equipments and electronic systems you're using are, are, are suitable for use and are, will consistently generate the, the, the data uh, that, that you're looking for. The environmental monitoring uh, is, again, is an area that you'd look at uh, on your premises and equipment, your water sampling, settle plates, um, the temperature of your, your, your production uh, rooms, uh, manufacturing rooms, and, and your uh, uh, packing rooms, and, and also your warehouse. Uh, pressure differentials will be looked at where you, you're, you're trying to obviously uh, manufacture um, products that are sensitive, uh, potentially to, to you know, contamination, uh, and to, to ensure that they're free of it, uh, you need to make sure that you have rooms where you have uh, pressure differentials uh, that allow uh, the, the, the air to, to flow in the right direction, uh, i.e. away from the product and, and potentially contaminating the, the, the drug product. Maintenance, so your maintenance department, uh, you know, should be overseen to make sure that they have a plan preventative maintenance in place for all the equipment that's that's used, the critical manufacturing equipments uh, and uh, cleaning, cleaning validation uh, is being performed to make sure that equipment is clean in the, in the, in the manufacturing packaging areas and pest control, uh, essentially looking at that within, within your, your warehouse environment where you're, you're storing your, your receipt of raw materials and, and your finished goods uh, ready for, for dispatch for sale. Security, uh, making sure you have uh, closed circuit television uh, in place uh, within the premises, uh, especially around certain manufacturing processes where uh, we need to use them for, for training purposes to make sure that uh, operators are performing their tasks consistently, just like the equipment does. Um, so, so these cameras will really help to ensure that your staff are uh, following the processes correctly because you, you're potentially dealing with high value medicines that you're manufacturing and, and if they get it wrong, it can be a cost exercise and, and also time consuming which could uh, impact on the, the end customer so uh, certain certain CCTV or, or security controls are there not just for uh, ensuring people don't get into the building but making sure that people in the building are also complying to, to, to good practices. Uh, access control making sure the right people have access to the right areas and you don't let people in that uh, shouldn't be in certain places uh, and, and that doesn't just apply to your premises it also applies to your electronic systems as well so having access and control on computerized systems is, is key. Now this is operation so I've, I've created this, this diagram here which kind of sums up I think nicely uh, how GMP goes across the site and, and also how uh, all the support functions here below I've got in blue uh, are supporting uh, the activities above. Um, now I see the, the key key functions really that, that go hand in hand are, are QC, QA, engineering, facilities and supply chain. They go across the manufacturing operations which I've highlighted in those um, sort of salmon colored arrows um, which talk about right at the beginning of, of, of bringing your, your materials uh, ready to assemble and get ready for production and, and, and obviously supply chain uh, planning and, and organizing with, with, uh, with production uh, and, and QA and QC to get those materials into the, in the production facility uh, and facilities making sure that all the, all, all the equipment is there ready uh, and available for use all cleaned and, and and, and, and uh, sparkling and engineering, make sure that they're all working uh, and, and making
making sure that they don't uh, fail during the production are all there to support throughout that process you know going into in from from production once the bark is manufactured and and it's ready for packing it then goes into the packing rooms uh, and then moves along uh, once it's finished uh, into into QC for QC testing and then into stability QA check the documentation all satisfactory then the suitably qualified person will, will then release those patches uh, for 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 storage and then for release to the customer now I've shown it in this way because I think really GMP goes across all these different functions I've got on here and any that I've missed but I'm, I'm sure that you know you you would, you would agree that a lot of the the critical functions are are being covered here in this uh, in this sort of uh, diagram that I've got here in front of you And some of the quality um, oversight processes that uh, I've, I've already touched on just before these are, are covered here, like uh, quality management personnel, documentation, uh, equipment and uh, uh, premises and equipment. Now, uh, the, these are really the, the, the areas where quality will make sure that the documentation there uh, for all these is, is, is there for all of those activities that I've just shown in, in that diagram. Uh, and now we'll move on to the other three uh, that uh, are the next ones, uh, which will be contracted services. Now, with, with regards to your contracted services that you use, um, you know, these can be a whole host of different services, you know, people supplying uh, raw materials, uh, supplying components, and even those providing services such as pest control, uh, engineers, maintenance people uh, that come on site to, to service some of your, your equipment or calibrate uh, some of your equipment. Um, so these are all uh, sort of your GMP uh, suppliers, service providers, and, and they should all be on an approved uh, supply list. Now to get them on there, you need to go through a number of steps. And, and I've really highlighted here the, the top level ones to consider, which is essentially, you know, a new supplier coming on board. You want to do a due diligence audit of them to make sure that they're suitable to uh, to to meet your uh, your requirements, um, you know your URS as it were, and and if they they're successful uh, and they comply with your your expectations of GMP, uh, then you would want to set up. Uh, with this vendor, a, a quality technical agreement. So this definitely has to be put in place. And, and you know, th this is ranging from uh, suppliers of raw materials, components for, for your packaging, uh, as well as um, pest control providers for your facility, cleaning services if you outsource that. Um, all of these archive facilities, they should all uh, be having quality technical agreements with, with yourselves. So, um, and all of these will need to be adapted accordingly for that type of service so you know one size doesn't fit all you do need to adapt your quality technical agreements to be appropriate for the level of service they're offering and and if that service is is going to have an impact on gmp uh, whether that be for the product or even the product information data for example like an archive facility storing your your, your data on your in your gmp activities then you your technical agreement needs to talk about how how your documentation will be handled stored and and data integrity essentially um, should be covered within that and again, in recent years, there's been a lot of emphasis around mapping your supply chain with, with a lot of issues with falsification uh, within, within the, the pharmaceutical sector. Um, there's a lot of uh, emphasis on, on having that visibility of your supply chain right through to your supplier of, of the, the starting materials uh, and knowing where they're coming from, uh, the quality of it, and uh, who is transporting it um, right the way through to your facility. Um, having that visibility all mapped out um, so that um, your, your, your qualified person uh, right at the end who's going to be releasing your batch to the, to the, to, to the, the market is aware of, uh, of all the suppliers and, and the carriers involved in, in getting the materials to your, your facility and, and onwards. Inspections. There are different types of inspections. I've covered them all within, within this title of inspections, and, and that is uh, internal audits. Now, internal audits are, are ones that uh, your, your, your company would cover, your, your quality function would, would lead that 
bring in the SMEs from the, the different uh, different departments to, to look at the, the processes there. So for example, uh, QA would work with facilities to arrange uh, an audit of, of how the equipments are, are serviced, how they're sent off for calibration, uh, uh, and, and also how the plan, plan preventative maintenance is, is managed and is it up to date? Are there any deficiencies there? So you would you go about doing this by, by putting all the, the, the areas where you'd want to be auditing them onto an annual plan. Uh, you would issue an agenda for, for that particular process that you're going to be auditing or department, uh, write up the report, and out of that, I'm sure you would find and cappers as we're always looking to improve ourselves uh, where you capture any any deficiencies that that you you find and then on the inspections you have your regulatory inspection so these are your health authorities who issue you with your, your manufacturing license who will come and visit your site on I presume a risk-based basis uh, to ensure that you are uh, meeting the requirements of the regulations meeting the requirements of your license and and keeping up to 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 the GMP standards and uh, through those inspections again inspectors are there to find areas for improvement there 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 will be cappers that come out of those which you would have to to work through and and then provide to the uh, inspectorate to show that you've uh, remediated those deficiencies satisfactorily and then on top of that, if you thought that was more than enough, you've got customer inspections and those are your, your clients inspecting you uh, to see that you're manufacturing their products uh, uh, appropriately. And, and don't forget, uh, I mean, this is just being quite generic here. Um, there could be situations where you, you could be one of the big farmers where you, you are not a CMO, you, you are actually uh, manufacturing your own products. So in those cases, you, you're very unlikely to have a, a client inspection. But um, with now in this world where we're doing a lot of outsourcing, seeing a lot of contract manufacturing happening. I'm sure this will apply to many, many of those uh, that are listening to this training, uh, that uh, customer inspections are, are, are a lot worse are actually sometimes than, than the regulatory inspections or your internal inspections because they, they expect you to do better than they would typically do. So again, um, cappers will come out of these and you need to ensure that they, they meet the requirements of, of your client uh, before they can be uh, uh, closed out. Now I've clumped all incidences in, into, into this slide here because I think you know incidences are where, where things go wrong. You know, and they, they do go wrong everywhere in life. Uh, some cases more than others, more serious. Uh, but uh, here, what I've tried to show here is really that uh, incidences are, are something that we need to learn from. And uh, I've, I've said that um, incidences are happening in a number of different areas within production. Um, they can happen right at the beginning of uh, receiving the raw materials. You could find issues. It could happen uh, in the warehouse where you could have damages. It could go right into dispensing, to manufacturing, packing, uh, uh, into QC, uh, into all areas, really. Even, even the, the support functions I mentioned, even uh, finance, uh, regulatory, you could have issues where things could go wrong. Uh, and these would really be captured under under these areas that I've, I've highlighted here. Um, I'm not going to go into in, in, into any detail on these, but as you can see, um, incidences really can be clumped into into this one area. And and from this, it it then gets triggered into right up to the beginning where we have the quality management, where we have the cappers, where it goes into that and. That hopefully will 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 fix the problem immediately and uh, on a on a on a permanent basis, uh, so that you don't come across these issues again, uh, or at least uh, not for some time. So, in summary, again going back to the slide that I had somewhere halfway uh, on this uh, this training is about uh, the operational activities, and as you can see, uh, it all points to to what goes on on site, which is the manufacturing of your drug product uh, and its packing, uh, its testing, uh, its storage and, and release. That's the operations. And these are all the elements of, of quality that, uh, that support your operations. And quality has an involvement in all of these and ensuring that documents are generated, uh, reviewed, assessed, and improvements are made to ensure that the life cycle of your product is maintained to the highest quality, ensuring the patient safety, uh, quality, and efficacy. 
So I've just got some questions here just to do your knowledge check. Um, good manufacturing practice provides assurance on, is it A, B, C, or D? The correct answer here is B. Next question. Name GMP three processes managed by quality that support operations. Is it finance, legal, HR? Pest control, cleaning, calibration, quality management, personnel, documentation, or contractor services, engineering, and incidents? The correct answer is C. Name three topics considered in the GMP process quality management. They are quality risk management, CAPA product quality review. What is the main document you would refer to in relation to the requirements of site-wide validation? That's the validation master plan. As part of vendor management, what are the two main steps you would take in improving a new supplier, in approving a new supplier? That is due diligence, GMP audit, and quality technical agreement. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this training. It was very brief and very quick, but I hope it gives you a flavor of uh, uh, a nice way to summarize uh, how quality goes across your site and uh, those ICH elements, how they are uh, uh, covered. Uh, in, in a simplified form. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. My name is Sanjay Nadraja, and you can reach me on info at Thank you.